how to build an agency around your ideal lifestyle. How are you doing guys and welcome to a new video. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Joshua Daniel George. I help brands scale up with paid traffic and also help agencies do the same. And in this video, I want to quickly talk about how you can actually design your agency in a way that gives you the most peace of mind, makes you the most successful, and basically, you know, generates you a certain amount of income so that you can live life completely on your own terms. Because more often than not, you know, people want to start social media marketing, they want to get into the agency space, or they just want to earn money online, but they don't really have a north star. They don't really know where to go to, they don't really know what they want to achieve, and once they start making a certain amount of money, they don't really understand what the end game is for them. And the great thing about this is, is that there's no right or wrong, it's your agency. So you decide how much money your agency is making, you decide how your agency is structured, and you also decide how active you are inside the agency. So all of these gurus that are telling you you need to be working on the business, not in the business, you need to be setting X amount of appointments, you need to be on X amount of calls every single day, you don't need to be doing anything, you need to be looking at what you want to achieve, and then looking to build an agency that allows you to do that. And as cheesy as it sounds, you know, the saying, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life is 100% true. So what you need to focus on is building an agency or building a service-based business model if you don't really necessarily wanna go into the SMMA space that aligns with your ideal lifestyle. So what we need to do first is figure out what your ideal lifestyle looks like. How much time do you want to be spending in the business? How much time do you want to be spending, you know, traveling the world? What is your passion? What do you like doing? And how can we incorporate that into your lifestyle? So for example, with me, I very much love traveling. That is something that, you know, I try to do as often as I can. Um, you know, for those of you that have been watching my previous videos, obviously I've just come back from Bali. Before that I was in Lanzarote. Um, we've got, you know, a few other trips already lined up to start off the new year. Uh, that is something that I very much enjoy doing. So I've built an agency that allows me to do that. One thing that obviously, you know, is quite difficult is to take meetings when I'm in different countries. So what have I done? I've hired a sales team that can take the meetings for me. In terms of reporting to the clients, we do that in video form. So whether it is Elliot, you know, the head of operations, or it's me doing the update videos uh, where we report back to the clients, it's in video form. So it doesn't matter if I do that in the mornings or in the evenings, as long as the client gets that update video on that particular week, you know, everything is fine and I don't need to hop on a call with that particular client. Another example of what you can look at is do you want a physical office space or are you completely happy working from home? Then when you work from home, do you like to work from your laptop or again, do you need an actual desk? So for me, it is the latter. You know, I like to have my own office space, but I do like to have it in my own home. So that means that I don't need any physical office space outside of my house. I don't need, um, you know, an office with physical employees or anything like that. That is not something that I necessarily want. So that is something that obviously then I can scrap. And again, there is no right or wrong. If you want a physical office or if you're more productive working in a physical environment, then by all means do so. Just build an agency around that. Okay, so once you have a clear vision of what your ideal life looks like, then we can start to reverse engineer the agency to turn our vision into a business plan. So the first thing I would do once we've worked out what the ideal life looks like, for me again, like I said, um, you know, I like to build things. I like to build businesses. Um, I don't necessarily want to be on sales calls every day. Like I said, all these gurus promoting 12 to 14 appointments set a day, etc. That is not something that I want. So what we've done is we've made it possible for me to earn probably just as much money, if not more, as what these appointment setting agencies are promoting, uh, but then with far less clients, far less meetings, etc. So once you've done that, then we can start to look at the agency. So a service-based business, what is the service you're going to be offering? Is that consultant? Is that Google Ads? Is that TikTok Ads? Is that Facebook Ads? Is it all of the above? Is it influencer marketing? Is it email marketing? Is it just you know consulting where you don't actually touch any of the ads at all? You're just telling the client what to do. Is it appointment setting? You know, if you want to start your own appointment setting agency, then by all means do so. You need to find a service that first of all, obviously, you know, you are good at, 
if you are going to be doing the service delivery yourself, which I do highly recommend, especially when you set up backend deals like we teach in Consult X and a service that obviously is in line with what you want to do in life. So for me, again, because I like traveling the world, I like working from my laptop, I need to find a service where I'm not constantly behind the laptop, but I can actually provide the clients a return on investment. So paid traffic, Facebook ads is obviously perfect for me. Then once you've found your service, obviously we now need to find your ideal audience. So your target market for your service. And even here, there's a few things that we need to look at. Do you want to work with corporate clients? Do you want to work with drop shippers? Do you want to work with males, with females? Do you want to work within a certain niche? And this again comes down to what your ideal agency looks like. If you want to have this corporate vibe where you're working with seven and eight figure businesses, you know, again, that is completely fine. But obviously, you know, there are certain uh, expectations from a corporate client that you may not be able to do because it's not in line with your ideal lifestyle. So again, for example, with me, if I had a lot of corporate clients, which we actually, you know, we do have a few corporate clients now, but we have set the expectations with these corporate clients that it's not going to be set up in a corporate structure. Let me explain. So a lot of seven and eight figure businesses with outside investors, etc. They want a lot of things documented and they also want to be in the loop at all times. So just a simple update video with the last seven days and the next steps for the next seven days will probably not suffice. For the big corporate clients, you will probably need to hop on calls, you know, whether that is daily or weekly, you will need to keep logs, you will need to, you know, fill out spreadsheets and so on and so forth. If that is not something that you're willing to do, then maybe the corporate um, clientele is not necessarily the clientele that you want to be focusing on. So there may be small to medium sized businesses that are already doing well is, you know, something that is more in line with your ideal agency, which is the same with us as well. Clients that are doing anywhere between 30 to 100K a month that are still considered small to medium sized businesses that don't necessarily have outside investors that are on Shopify and already have a proven target market or proven product market fit. You know, those are the ideal clients for us. Then, once you've basically identified what your ideal life looks like, what kind of agency you want that will allow you to have that ideal life, what kind of target markets you need to be focusing on. Again, that is all in line with your agency and your ideal lifestyle. From there, obviously, we can start focusing on the service delivery. So do you want to have employees, yes or no? And when you decide to have employees, are those employees you know, where are they going to be based? And are those employees going to be on payroll? Are they going to be freelancers? Are they going to be virtual or physical? Again, this is all in line with how you want your agency to be structured. There is no right or wrong. I have one full-time employee and I have about six or seven virtual assistants that are all on freelancer contracts that are either pay per clients or just a fixed fee every single month. Now, like I said, I do not want to be hopping on calls with potential clients 24 seven, because well, quite frankly, it's not, you know, one of my strengths. I am much more effective on the back end. And to be fair, it's something that I enjoy much more than hopping on calls every single day. Um, so I've actually restructured my agency in order to, you know, let me do so. So we have appointment setters, we have Facebook ads running, and we have a lot of referral programs running with our existing clients, and that will basically allow us to get calls booked. Then we have Elliot, my head of operations, who takes the sales call. If he finds the client interesting, or if he finds the brand or business interesting, he knows how much they're currently making, what their profit margins are, what they're aspiring to get to, and he thinks it's gonna be a good fit for our agency then you know he will basically close that deal and only then do I come into play. So once that contract is signed, once that first invoice is paid, then I come into play and I start working on the ads. So that basically it's minimum input from me on the front end and a lot of input from me on the back end. But that is fine because when you're not on call 24 seven, you can still structure your day in a way that you know you like to have your day structured. So if I wanna go to the gym in the morning time, I can do so as long as you know I basically get the work done in the afternoon. And the great thing about it is because we're only focused on paid traffic, we're not doing a social media management, we're not doing influencer marketing or anything like that, um, I've become an expert at Facebook ads because that is obviously you know, the, the platform that we focus on most. Of course, we've got some clients on TikTok now because that is obviously the new shiny object for clients. But Facebook ads or meta ads, if you know that is what you want to call it, is still our core offer. And because I am the one running the ads, 
I am the one that is in the trenches every single day, you know, making sure that our clients get results. Because of that, I've become an expert at it and I'm, you know, able to give our clients a good return on investment, which brings me to my last point. When you have everything set up with your agency, you also need to figure out how much time do you realistically want to be spending on your agency. Of course, we all now want to say, oh, as little time as possible, right? But we need to be realistic here. For me, I don't want to be spending more than four to five mandatory hours on the agency. So I don't mind spending 10 hours a day behind my laptop because obviously that is what I enjoy doing. But as long as my to-do list, my physical actual to-do list of things that need to be done that day does not take up more than, like I said, you know, three to, let's say, maximum of five hours. So that the rest of the day I can do what I want. And more often than not, it is actually still working behind the laptop. But at least it's not because I have to. It's because I like it and because I want to. So because of that, I don't want to be managing 40, 50 clients a month because obviously, you know, that is not realistic. It's going to bring a lot of additional stress and because my service delivery will probably you know, end up suffering because of it. So the way we've structured it, like I said, is we work off a performance basis. So we get paid the better we perform for our clients, the more money they make, the more money we make. We also get a fixed retainer, just you know, obviously for our time and for the service that we offer. And then we also charge an onboarding fee where we make sure that the client is basically ready to make a lot of money. So we sort out their conversion rate, we look at their Shopify store and implement all the changes that we think are gonna benefit the clients. And that way we can make quite a lot of money with quite a, you know, a relatively small clientele. So right now, our agency is doing around the 40K a month profit mark. So, you know, it's not the biggest agency. It's definitely not the smallest agency. We definitely don't have the least amount of clients. You know, we would like to trim the fat off of a few clients right now. Um, but, you know, we're not managing 50, 60 clients uh, in order to, you know, keep the agency running. So if I was still charging only the upfront retainer, uh, then, you know, I'd basically need 40 plus clients in order to get the same uh, amount of revenue with the agency as we are currently doing with all of the back end deals. And like I said, this is all made possible with our new company structure. And that is what we also teach in Consult X. So if you guys do not know, Consult X is our pay program where we guarantee all agencies that come through the program an additional 10,000 in monthly recurring revenue for their agency within the first 90 days of joining the program or they get all of their money back. So you basically get a 100% refund guarantee if you're not able to hit an additional 10K a month in monthly recurring revenue for your agency. And we do that by helping you set up those backend deals. So how you can recognize clients that are you know, basically a good fit for the backend deals, how you can set up the backend deals so that you get paid either a percentage of revenue or a percentage of ad spend, depending on what is most beneficial for you and for the client. And of course, how to get the client's results so that you know your backend deal is even juicier than those upfront retainers that all of these gurus are promoting. Okay, so if you find that interesting, check out the link in the description box down below. It's a video that explains exactly how we do that, exactly how it works and how you can join the program. If you like this video, please leave it with a thumbs up and also comment down below what you'd like to see from this channel next. Subscribe to the channel for more and I'll see you all in the next video.